Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider one of the situations, one of the types of situations where the first dead wave test is inconclusive. And that is where the first derivative, so the problem is that the first derivative oscillates in sign between positive and negative on the immediate left, or the same problem happens on the immediate right or both sides. And therefore, you cannot figure out whether it's actually a local min or max on the left. It could be both, I mean, it could be either, it could be neither, okay? Just say oscillatory in sign, just to be clear. The derivative sign is oscillating on the immediate left. Now I have a picture here. Have you heard? Yeah. So I have a picture here. So you see from this picture that you have a local min at zero, right? But on the immediate left of zero, what's the sign of the derivative? Don't know. Well, you know it, there's no fixed sign, right? It keeps changing. And however close you get to zero, you'll have these ups and downs. Similarly on the right. Okay. So if you're trying to use the first derivative test, it wouldn't work. Okay. Why? Because the first derivative doesn't have a fixed sign on the immediate left or on the immediate right. Okay. Let's get started on this test then. So, on, on showing this, why it doesn't work. And the way I want to do is I want to take a numerical version of this, I mean, actual algebraic expressions, and show that it basically meets this qualitative criteria. So, the expression is like this. So, fx is absolute value x times 2 plus sine 1 for x for x non-zero, and it's 0 for x equal to 0. First thing I want to argue is that f has a strict local and absolute minimum at 0. Why is that? So you just have to show absolute minimum, that is, it's, it's less than everything. Why is that? Why is it less at zero than everywhere else? Because f uh, can, can now be negative. Well, in fact, it has to be positive is what you're saying, because I said strict. Mm -hmm. okay. Why is that? Well, if x is non-zero, let me just write that So if x is non-zero, whether positive or negative, then mod x is greater than 0, right? Mm -hmm. And 2 plus sine 1 over x, where does that land? Between? 1 and 3. Yeah, so 2 plus minus 1 and 2 plus 1. So, so 1 and 3. So you're multiplying a positive number by a positive number, so the product is positive. Okay? And that means that it's greater than 0, which is f of 0. Here? Okay, so that's good. We got that it has a strict local and absolute minimum at zero because everywhere else it's strictly bigger. Okay. What about continuity? How would you show continuity? Take the limit. Well, you can take the limit. So limit as x approaches zero of absolute value x, 2 plus sine 1 over x. Well, absolute value x, this part just goes to 0, right? And uh, this part, 2 plus sine 1 over x is oscillating between 1 and 3. Okay, we don't really know where this is oscillating. But approaching 0 times anything which is bounded also gives you what? 0. 0, right? Which is f of 0. Good. So it's continuous, and that's one of the conditions to apply the first derivative test. That's why I checked this condition. Okay, so it's continuous. It has a strict local absolute minimum, and the derivative exists on the left and the right of zero, because on the left and right it's just it's an expression. You can differentiate the usual way. Let's try to calculate the derivative on the left of zero. Let me do that on a separate sheet. It's a little messy, and I'll just write the conclusion here. So let's let's differentiate this. So what's fx on the left of zero? Well the absolute value has become minus x, so fx is what's fx? Minus x. Two plus sine one over x. Okay, now we need to differentiate this. 
okay so the we have to use the product rule okay so it's minus of this thing so i'll just write minus 2 minus sine 1 over x now you can see this trick here so you have minus x times the derivative of 2 plus sine 1 over x the derivative of 2 is 0 what rule are we using right now the product rule okay but now we have to use derivative of 2 plus sine 1 over x and that's derivative of 2 is 0 so you just get cosine 1 over x times minus 1 over x squared So the minus will cancel and you'll get this you get minus two minus sine one over x plus one over x cosine one over x. Looks good. Okay, so let me just write that down here. Okay, now what can we say about the uh, the sign of this when x is slightly less than 0? Okay, now this minus 2 is minus 2. This part is between minus 1 and 1. So this whole thing. This whole thing is between minus 1 and minus 3. Right? So it, it's bounded. What about this piece though? Well, cosine 1 over x is oscillating between uh, positive and negative. This 1 over x, however, is getting very large in magnitude and remaining negative, right? So this product is actually going to be oscillating between minus infinity and infinity, okay? So it's very large magnitude positive to very large magnitude negative. So this, this whole thing that was in this is bounded and this is between minus infinity and infinity. This is oscillating in minus infinity infinity okay so what can you say about the sign of this on the immediate uh, left of zero it's our slightly so there's no de definite sign on the immediate left okay that's that's uh, that was our clear okay what about the right one well the right one uh, the derivative is going to look just the negative of this right Because instead of the minus x, you have just plus x, and it's just the minus sign will come out. Is that right? Minus 1 over x, cosine 1 over x. You can use the same logic, essentially, to show that this is also oscillating between minus infinity and infinity on the immediate right of 0. So what can you say about the sign of the derivative on the immediate right of 0? It changes. Yeah, so it's not it's not positive on the immediate right, and it's not negative on the immediate. I mean, it's not a six, six single fixed sign on the immediate right. Okay, so here we have a situation where you do have a local minimum. In fact, an absolute minimum at the point. It is continuous. The derivative does exist on the immediate left and right, but it doesn't have a constant sign on either side. And this is essentially the example that that sort of motivates us now. You can also use this to construct an example where you have a, a local maximum hmm? mm -hmm. with the same type of situation. How would you convert this to an example with local maximum instead of local minimum? Hmm? Uh, put a negative sign. Put a negative sign here. Okay. How would you convert it to a situation where it's a um, maximum from the left, minimum from the right, etc.? Well, you can just like move or take out the absolute value sign out here. Right, you remove the absolute value sign, mm -hmm. and then and then put a plus or minus, and that will give you max from left, min from right, max from right, min from left, etc. You can get various combinations like that. What if you want a situation where it's neither, or see where it's not a one-sided max, and you have oscillatory sign? Well, that's actually easier. You could also have a function. Uh, instead of this function, you could take uh, another f. So this is not the same f, but you could have a function like.
So if you didn't put the 2 plus on this, you just had x sine 1 over x, then you still have oscillatory derivative on the immediate left and right, but this time you wouldn't have a local extreme from either side, because this would have a picture like, uh, this would have a picture like this type of thing. So it's oscillating, so the function itself doesn't have a local maximum. And now once you have this and this, you can then combine to get all possible left-right combinations. Okay. So oscillatory derivative, what does that tell you? I mean, oscillatory sign of derivative, what does that tell you about one-sided or two-sided local extrema? It's inconclusive. It's inconclusive. Both one-sided, two-sided, everything. So this just means that you cannot use the first derivative test. And you have to use some other method. Maybe, like in this case, we just did a direct analysis of the function. Mm -hmm. So you maybe have, have to use some other method. 